Shut up and sit down. All right, I'm going to get right into it. Okay. Grace Hancock? Grace is that, Hancock. Is it Heather Grace or Grace? I mean, my like stage name stuff is Heather Grace Hancock, but nobody calls me Heather unless I'm on set. Well, what's your real name? Like, what do you, what's your birth certificate say? My birth certificate actually says Heather Grace Hancock. Okay. So that is your SAG name? Yeah, that's my yeah, SAG yeah. name is but Heather you like Grace, Grace Hancock. Better. Yeah. I uh, mean, if you know me, you call me Grace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, how's it going? Where are you from? Where are you? I want to know like everything <laughs> hey. about you. I feel like, <laughs> like this is just like, I just threw a dart in twitter and i was like hey do you want to be on my show and you're like sure and i was like okay uh now I I have to, like, all these weirdos are like be on the podcast and then you're like do you want to be on the podcast and i'm like yeah i want to be on the podcast oh so. you saw the comments of yeah. like yeah you should be on it yeah i <laughs> know <laughs> we got like peer pressured by twitter is essentially yeah, yeah. what happened that's pretty much it that's yeah but well, you're here I'm, here I'm excited thank you for having yeah. me i'm excited Th also thank you um so what do you you're from collider i know you from collider right what do you do from at collider um i think my technical title is programming coordinator yeah you have um, technical titles i think that's a, a a beautiful overarching statement for just kind of whatever gets thrown at me oh yeah <laughs> but yeah so i do a lot of um i think probably the thing that makes the most sense i'm kind of like a production coordinator oh, okay is that your desk like right by the front or which one it's the one that's like right outside John's office. Oh, okay. The one with like the skull on it and the really cute lamp. You have a skull on your desk? Yeah, I have a skull. I mean, not a real. I, I know. Not <laughs> it's yet. from one of my enemies. It's a long uh. story. No, I have like a skull with the succulents and the blue lamp and like the Hobbit beer. You'll know it is when it, you see is it. Is it like Lord of the Rings bed. thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a dog bed. <laughs> yeah, and I have, I have one of the like Hobbit beers that they did a few years oh. ago when the first one came oh, out. You're a big Hobbit fan? I'm not a big Hobbit. I love the book, The Hobbit. Oh. I didn't love The Hobbit films. Oh, okay, I love yeah. The Lord of the Rings films. Oh, okay. But you um, read all those stories? Oh, for sure. Really? You haven't read Lord of the Rings? No. What? <laughs> um, Are you... I'm like a fine, I'm like an average reader, but I read so slow that it would take me like all year to read it. It would be the best year of your life. That's I mean, a year well spent. No. Yeah. I, <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It is such a, it's a beautiful story and he's amazing. Who's I mean, amazing? J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, he's huh. phenomenal. Okay. I saw the first movie and I was like, this is fine. It's a movie. It's, it's, <laughs> oh it's good. God. <laughs> but, oh God. Wait. So the uh, first movie, are you referring to the fellowship of the, the ring? fellowship of the ring? Okay. Movie. Yeah, right. yeah. And I was like, okay. Or fellowship as we call it. Is it, is that like the shortened shorthand <laughs> version? <laughs> Bunch of nerds. I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. L-O-T-R. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you weren't so, a big fan of fellowship that was fine like sell me on the movie or sell me on the book like how how can i get into this <sighs> oh, wow i'm book. like ugh, <laughs> get a little knuckle crack in no i mean i love anything fantasy action e you know like that i read it when i was pretty young and it's just a beautiful story he's it's so 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 thick there's so much mm. dynamic there's a million things going on that you would never get from the films. And it's a beautiful, I mean, he's a tiny little hobbit. I obviously relate to that. I'm not that much taller than Frodo. And just the idea that no matter how small you are, you can change the course of the future. You can achieve these grand things. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. And all the friendships, it's amazing. So it's like an under underdog story. Like absolutely he achieves beyond what he's capable of of doing. course yeah so, and him and his and sam and their beautiful friendship and he saves them i made a, a, a samwise frodo joke just today with riley in the office and i nailed it <laughs> did you nail it really or was, I did. It, was it like he a goes, pity laugh he go, oh no he loved it he was a big belly laugh i swear he'll huh. listen to this and he'll because he, <laughs> oh this is so sad he was like so grace like what's going on with your dating life and i was like hmm let me think of a good metaphor. And he starts laughing. And I was like, have you seen Lord of the Rings? And he was like, of course. And I was like, it's kind of like Return of the King when Frodo's at the base of Mount Doom and his lips are chapped. He's tired. He's basically <laughs> dying. But I have no Samwise. And he just died laughing. So there's a very sad metaphor for my dating life and a great way to insert Lord of the Rings into your daily uh, life. Does that make, do you think Nailed Lord it. of the Rings is the reason for your dating life? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> probably yeah i mean amongst no. many many other things <laughs> but isn't your handle mrs grace hancock it's mrs grace face yeah or mrs yeah yeah so all my handles are mrs grace face. oh i thought like you were like engaged or married or like... i know that's i mean i love i'm a total troll uh -huh. i i'm i'm not engaged i'm not married um i t i'm very fascinated by 
I think it's so funny that there's like a Mr. And that's it. And then oh. there's a Mrs., a Miss, and a Ms. And they all kind of crack me up. And I kind of love screwing with people with that and kind uh-huh. of gender bending that. And so I was just like, screw it. I'm going to do Mrs. Gray's face. And I literally broke the internet for like 24 hours. Really? And I don't like respond to people when they ask me about it because I think it's hilarious because people take it so seriously. Oh, did you have it one day like Miss Gray's face and then you changed it? And then people freaked out after the change? I th- Yeah, no, it was never Miss. Uh-huh. I never had a Miss. I think it was just like you know, like Gracie or something back before uh, I was even doing social media. And then my friends, like all of all of my social medias have been created by one of my friends who's like, Grace, you got to like it with the kids. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, <laughs> you do it. Um, and then when I started kind of actually doing it, I was like, well, I should change it to something fun. And then it became Mrs. Uh, Grace's okay. face. But your parents see you like, oh, she's finally met somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were like, that's funny. I was like, I know, right? Oh, they get it too. <laughs> yeah, they I'm have, a total troll. You guys have like a sick sense of humor. I remember hearing you guys on <laughs> Ken's show where you told your dad like your mother doesn't like you or my mother doesn't like oh, you. Oh, yeah, we're totally, we're such jerks. It's hilarious. <laughs> We're a big, we're a total bunch of nerds and jerks. And it's it's a very, we're so close and we're so loving, but we totally, I mean, we will get in your face. Like it's a very, it's, it's a free for all at my house at all times. But how does that not like screw with your head where it's like your mother doesn't <laughs> yeah. even love you. Like she doesn't want you around <laughs> when you're like a small I child. Mean, I mean, no, that didn't, I, I don't think we did that when I was small. I'm sure we were like beating the crap out of each other when I was small. No, uh-huh. I think that was more of a a joke that evolved in our, in our adulthood. But, you know, my family is really close and we're all kind of, there's not a whole lot of dynamic of like a parent child dynamic. We're all kind of buddies. Oh. So it's just kind of, we just joke like that. I, I am it's, totally just yeah. this person with my parents too. I'm not like on my best behavior or anything uh, like that. Is Neither that a, are they. <laughs> is that a good or bad thing when like having parents as like buddies instead of like having them as parents? Cause I don't know, like, were you like a wild child when you're like, cause your parents had no like oh, rules honey. for you? What? Oh, yeah. No, I was a complete psychopath as a child. So I think... Psychopath. Oh, yeah. No, I was a total wild child. I was a very, very rebellious teenager. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's a, <laughs> probably subconsciously a big reason why I'm not interested in having children, because I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> I don't know if I can go through what I put them through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that as I kind of grew out of that, and we've we've all been through so much together and then you kind of become, you know, I'm sure you probably relate to that. At one oh, point okay. your parents do kind of become, you become a group of adults, yeah. you know, it's not so much like mom, you know, you're not like getting in trouble anymore and anything like that. Okay. Um, that makes more it. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that it's evolved to that. We're very, very close. I spoke to my mom probably for four hours on the phone yesterday. No really? joke. Yeah. We're extremely close. And my sister just flew in from Austin last week. Uh-huh. So and what did you guys do? Didn't it you was get, so much fun. You guys went to like Universal or something. Oh I'm like, yeah, I'm stalking you on like Instagram. Yeah, no, I'm please stalk like me. I encourage that research. And stuff. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you're like I hired a private investigator. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, followed yeah. you through like Wizard World and everything. <laughs> I know you're like the GPS on <laughs> my phone. I'm like, what is that? Hmm, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we went to Harry Potter Land uh, or is it Harry Potter World? I don't. Know. Is this one Land and the one in Florida's World? I don't know. I have it's a lot of questions. Probably like Disneyland, Disney World type. Yeah, thing. I feel like it's something like that. The but we went to the one. In, in in uh i guess universal city Universe. yeah, yeah so yeah it was so much fun mm-hmm. we're harry potter nerds i know you're shocked to hear this so um harry potter lord of the rings star wars, <laughs> star wars <laughs> yeah, yeah. everything but you know what hey, hey I, i'm in the right place at yeah. collider i'm the least of the nerds there so that's yeah. saying something but i wonder do you get comments of like oh like she's not a nerd like she's just pretending to be because she's just putting on a face because she's with the other nerds. <laughs> Have you ever got that? I'm trying to like blend in with the other nerds. I'm yeah. like, maybe they won't notice. I'm yeah. normal. <laughs> no, you know what? Actually, I actually kind of get the opposite. I kind of get, I get positive feedback that they're, it's a refreshing to get a perspective from somebody who's not like a diehard fan. You know, oh. I'm not at home like reading the Star Wars canon novels. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if that's what they're called. I but don't know either. I just grew up loving Star Wars. Like I just really adore and enjoy the films. So I'm like a nerd, but I'm not certifiable. <laughs> so I have not gotten that's... any hate for that yet. And oh, I appreciate okay. that. Thank you, Internet. That makes um, sense, though, because like there are some people who are like, even if it's a good or bad movie, they're going to love it because it's Star Wars. Sure. But you can stay, take a step back and say, hey, this isn't that great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I can also, um, you know, because people, it's funny when we do, like, for instance, the trailer reactions, it's funny 
the contrast, I think, with whoever I'm doing it with and Collider, they're like, oh, well, this, this, and this. And then I'm like, well, you know, it's just kind of a normal person. I liked this, this, and this. Yeah, yeah. So Like I saw somebody in a shadow and you're pointing out like the obvious things instead of like all these crazy theories of like, who's Yeah, they're like Easter eggs. And I'm like, well, I like the music. Like, so yeah. And also I'm an actor and there's not a lot of actors. So I think that that's probably the only other interesting perspective I'd bring. What I'm normal no, and I'm an actor, which is an oxymoron. Isn't that, yeah, that means you're not sure. normal. <laughs> Correct. I'm all over the place right now, but I want to get to like the beginning because I want, oh I want, now I know that you're a wild child, so I want to get into that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but where are you, where are you from? I'm from, well, I'm from Arizona. Uh-huh. I was born in Tucson and I lived there for about nine years and then we moved to Prescott and then I lived there for about nine years. Is that where your family still is right now? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. So it's not like, they're not that far away. It's like. No, it's like an eight hour drive or like a 90 minute flight. Okay. If I can fly um, direct into Prescott, which I can, gratefully, they have like an itty bitty little air, airport there now, so. Do you mostly go visit them or do they come visit you? Oh, no, I'd for sure go visit them. Really? It's kind of a joke. Me and my sister were like, yeah, we're kind of like the... (laughs) There's always like ethereal plans to come visit us. But but my parents work for themselves. They both Uh work full time. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, very successful entrepreneurial business people. So I get it. You know, Mm -hmm. it's harder for them to take off. And they also have like a farm of pets and Uh things. You know, they have a lot of responsibilities. My dad's at a band. My mom has all these groups and clubs and shit. So... They're busy. Oh, groups and club, like, like not old ladies clubs, but like, like <laughs> no, not old like ladies. Quilting. She's like, I can't. I have old ladies clubs on Tuesday. <laughs> no, she. I mean, my mom's like, my mom's like senior class president. Like, she's like head cheerleader of that whole town. Like, everybody uh-huh. loves. Sorry, your phone's going off. That was your mom calling. I know. She's like right there. She's like, <laughs> keep the cursing down, Grace. Um, but yeah, so no, so we definitely go visit them. But that's actually kind of nice because it's a great place to go back to. It's very yeah. much a reprieve from, you know, just kind of the crazy LA lifestyle, which I appreciate. Do you like you like going back there? Do you feel like uh, like I'm I'm the person that tried to go to Hollywood to make it and then they're like, oh, who's this big shot over here? <laughs> I do kind of I mean, I definitely do get that like, oh, like big city girls here. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, here I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I definitely I hated it when I lived there, as I, I've, I've mentioned before. I think probably all teenagers do. But it's, you hated living in Arizona. I hated living in Prescott. Okay. What, I really liked Tucson. I did not like Prescott. What is a, what is Prescott like? Is it just like a just desolate wasteland of <laughs> farm? I don't I'm know. like, yeah, it's like this post like nuclear war. No, <laughs> um, no, it's just it's a small town. I mean, oh. I grew up in the foothills of the desert, and then they moved me to the forest in the middle of nowhere. Oh. Um, is it like where it your neighbors just, like ten minutes away? Or not yeah, I mean, if you like, if you're at my parents' home, you can see maybe three or four houses uh-huh. off in the distance. Uh-huh. Like, there's no, it's not like neighbors. It's not because they just own all the land around them. So that's where you grew up in that house. Correct. Okay. So then, like, it was it just you and your sister, mm-hmm. and where you guys were like best friends then, right? Or no? I mean, we've always, for sure, my whole life been super, super close. There's been times when that's ebbed and flow a bit, probably because my sister was really, really, really intelligent and (laughs) level-headed. And I was a little bit all over the place (laughs) here and there in various seasons of my life. Um, But we've definitely, I mean, even when we were little, little, little kids, we were always super, super close. What's what's the age difference? Three years. Oh, okay. You guys like went to the same schools and everything. Yeah, it was cool because every time that she was a senior somewhere, I was a freshman because I kind of just followed her wherever she went because I adore her. (laughs) So when she, we went to the same high school and when she was a senior, I was a freshman and then I went to the same college she went to. And so when she was a senior, I was a freshman. So we always had one glorious year together and then Uh, she would leave and I'd be like, (laughs) meh. Did you go to her college on purpose or like, was that? Well... I mean, I wanted to because she lived there. She lived, I actually went back to college. I went back to Tucson to go to college. Uh, um, and I really, they have a very, very solid, very competitive, very intense uh, BFA program there for actors. Hmm. And I was like, I mean, I literally remember praying every single day. I was like, God, I got to get in that program. And I did, and I will be forever grateful. So had I not gotten in, I would not have gone. But it was only a bonus that she was already going there because then I could be with her. Why? When did you decide to become an actress? Oh my gosh. 
I mean, I think I was like four, honestly. Really? Yeah. I was there never was... like one of those kids who was like, I don't know what I want to be. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor for sure. You're like putting plays on for your parents, like oh in front God, of the fireplace yeah. or something? Like, oh, yeah. Since I was like room? really, really little. Really? I think I started doing that when I was like five. Really? Yeah, like really little. Where they're just like, great, sit down. Like, what the I know, fuck are you doing? They're like, oh, God, another one of these. <laughs> like, no, I was a mega nerd and I would force all my friends and like neighborhood kids to do it with me. And oh, I, really? You would put on plays? Oh, like, yeah. Or, I would write them. I would direct them. Oh, really? I would be in them. I would make, I remember one time I made my sister <laughs> be in a play with me and I wanted the character because I had like a whole vision. I wanted the character to have <laughs> long like pigtail braids. Uh-huh. So I took a pair of tights, like women's tights, uh-huh. and I had her put it over her head and then had the two legs be the long braids. And then I cut them each into three so I could braid them. Like this is the level of commitment but that I forced be on the people around me. Nothing. It was just like the tights were the hair. Oh, I thought you'd have to like fill it up so it looks like thick hair. <laughs> I mean, I should have. <laughs> she basically just looked like the dancer from Star Wars who dies. Like, <laughs> like it was so horrifying. But I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And I would, and everyone was a really good sport around. So it was me. all commitment. Like, if you're gonna do it, you got to do it like full on. Yeah, I was right? like, you're putting tights on your head. Like, get on board. <laughs> so was your sister like into acting or performing as well? My sister is very, very musical. She Uh did a little bit of theater here and there, but she was, nobody in my family really did acting at all. Um, But I have a very musical family. Yeah, your dad, you said your dad's in a band. So it's very like artistic type family. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean it's a very it's a it's a creative family. Mm. I would not say artistic. I don't know why they're different, <laughs> but is an artistic creative or? I mean, they yeah, don't... in a way, like I'm super artistic. Like I feel like every like you know like from the way that I do my makeup or dress or hair. Like I'm just I'm very very artistic. If you come to my house, like there's just art everywhere. You know, oh, like that's you, what like I you think paint of. And stuff yeah, too? yeah. Oh wow. So I it's just. You know, I can't get enough of it. Everything uh, I do in my life has to be you like know, expression. Like yeah, expressing absolutely, yourself. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yeah. So my family is maybe a little bit more mellow on that spectrum, but like super, super musical, super talented, very creative, mm-hmm. Did, but not as expressive. Uh, I guess <laughs> <laughs> you are the expressive child. Yeah, I'm the uh, yeah for did, sure. But uh, did you ever like try to play an instrument, like play with your dad or anything? Oh yeah, I mean, me. I'm a big. I'm super, super into like old school rock. Uh-huh. I love that's me and my dad really, really bond listening to like Satriani and watching all these YouTube videos. We just get lost. Wait, in, wait Satriani? What is- he's like this amazing guitarist. I mean, like uh-huh. life, like it's just incredible to watch because my dad's main instrument is electric guitar. I was thinking old school rock like Led Zeppelin or something. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, my musical taste is absolutely Led Zeppelin. Oh, okay. That's actually my favorite. <laughs> um, and I did uh, my research. <laughs> yeah, you like found that on some like MySpace. Face post like circa 97 i'm like shit this guy's good that was the song on your my <laughs> yeah. like a whole lot of love oh yeah up. i totally had like stairway to heaven yeah. posters in my room like 14 like i'm hardcore yeah um but yeah so uh um i did i was forced when i was very very young to do piano lessons which oh. i hated and then i circled back to it as an adult and then i loved it and i actually um you know, if I had more time, I just have, I, there's so many things that I'm interested in. If I had mm-hmm. more time, I actually think that I would take it up again. But I have a little electric keyboard and I can pound out a little Oh, so you still can tune. play. Oh, okay. I feel, <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're like so erratic, like no offense to you, <laughs> <laughs> but like you just can't like sit and like learn, learn something or practice like day in and day out. Oh no, I would actually say I'm definitely just I think you're probably interpreting because I have so many things that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Like that you're it's all erratic. over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm very, very, very tunnel vision. Oh, okay. Um, so once I'm like laser focused on something, I can totally do it. And sometimes that's kind of nice. Um, it can be relaxing to kind of like tune everything out and just be like, I'm going to learn this song. Um, oh, okay. So I yeah, that, I wish yeah. I had kept with it more than I more than I did. I think it's very therapeutic where it's like, okay, I'm doing this right now. As opposed to just like, okay, now I got to be there somewhere. I got to be, I got to yeah. make a meeting and stuff. Yeah, which is kind of, you know, the whole, you know, life that the, we have the, here in this LA industry. Yeah, yeah, it's like. <laughs> Didn't you say in Ken's podcast where like you get like people say bad thing? Like it's a kind of a negative connotation that you're a workaholic. Mm-hmm. And like that's not, a, I don't see why that's a bad thing. Oh, I adore you. <laughs> I don't either. No, I mean, I think it's totally. 
I, th- you know, and I said this on on Ken's that I think that humans are are built to be productive. I don't mm. if there's if I'm not fulfilling things, fulfilling goals, achieving things, like what the hell are we doing here? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I mean, I, like, don't get me wrong. It's nice to sit. Well, for me, I don't know about you, but it's, <laughs> it's nice to sit like on a Sunday night and just like sit on the couch and like play video games for me, or sure. or watch a movie, watch it like binge watch something. Yeah, Netflix and chill, man. Yeah, but during the week, I'm just like, okay, I got to be up by this time. Mm-hmm. I got to do this until then and come back home. And do that the same thing the next day right yeah I mean work hard play hard yeah is but, that how is that how you are I mean yeah I definitely <laughs> I fall a little more on the spectrum of working hard but only huh. because you know I'm young I'm single I don't have children like this is the time to do it mm-hmm. um so I want to fully take advantage of that opportunity because I know a lot of my friends you know a ton of my friends and I'm sure you relate to this like I go to like six weddings a year. It's like, holy shit. Like, you know, I think that when you do that and that's great, but your priorities change. <laughs> Sorry, I just burped. I try to like, <laughs> I try to like <laughs> condense it. It just like came I out. I saw the struggle of you being like, oh shit, it's loud. <laughs> hey, Sorry. judgment free. Uh, it's this red ball. That I'm having. <laughs> but you go, you, to si- you go to six weddings and you're just, what, what were you saying? I mean, I just think, you know, that's a... A great path to be on. It's not the path that I'm on, but mm-hmm. if I was on, you know, there's there's things that are happening that will change your focus. That will change, you know, I you know, if I married somebody, God forbid, I would love, you know, I want to commit to somebody. It's mm-hmm. going to be something that it's going to take a lot of my time because I don't have that right now. I'm like sweet, like this is my window mm-hmm. to really hustle and do what I want to do with my career. Did you have like a set time of like you want where things you wanted to accomplish? Like where you're like, okay, I'm going to be, well, where did you never want to be in a relationship or be married like in your twenties or anything? I mean, I think when I was like 15, I was like, well, when I'm 25, I'll be married and have two kids. But I think Mm -hmm. that's just because when you're young, I mean, your, your concept of adulthood is like, well, when you're like 20, you're like an adult. And now I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? (laughs) Like, I don't, I'm not an adult. Like I'm horrible at this. Um, so no, I didn't have, I don't have any kind of, uh, a timeframe on that. You know, I'm not somebody who has ever necessarily wanted children. Um, I'm open to the idea. Mm-hmm. I'm open to my mind changing, but that's just never really been a passion for me. I do absolutely want to be married someday, I think, but I definitely um, – somebody would have to very, very strongly get my attention <laughs> uh-huh. for that to happen. He'd have to be worth it. Right, 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 yeah, which yeah. he should. I mean, yeah, shit, yeah. if you're going to get married, yeah. Hopefully you only do that once. So, yeah. you, I mean, you got to be picky. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents married once? My parents were both married once. And they've been and together ever married. since? Wow. Yeah. So you would think that like, okay, like they worked. Maybe I can find someone to work out things. Yeah, with. absolutely. You know, it's just, it's, it's hard, you know, because I am, you know, I'm not in a relationship right now, but I am dating, uh-huh. which is funny. <laughs> I feel very funny saying that. Dating. Um, I'm socializing. Are you on the, are you on the apps? On the- <laughs> no, God, no. I get a lot of shit for that too. They're like, Grace, get on some Bumble. And I'm like, I'm not... First of all, all the people that I'm talking to now, like, they're like, oh, my God, that was so fun. What can I see you again? And I'm like, well, I can pencil you in in two months. Like, I'm a total jerk. Yeah, because I'm very, very – my schedule is so, so, so full. Uh So – and my and, – and, you know, not to keep saying this, but I also said this on kids. Like, my life is very full and not mm. in a scheduling manner. Like, emotionally and, and, and all those things. Like, I'm really doing a lot of things that I really, really enjoy and really love. And being single looks so fucking good on me. Like <laughs> – I, I'm, you know, I'm healthy. I'm happy. I live in a house that I pay for by myself. I have two dogs. Like my life is pretty, you know, like I'm very content. It's not that I'm not hoping to meet somebody or hoping to, you know, achieve better things, but I'm, I'm like, this looks pretty good. Like I'm good. Yeah. You, you're able to support yourself. You're very independent that way. Yeah. I'm super, super independent. And I'm very, I'm, I, I really thrive being alone a lot Mm -hmm. of the time. I'm really kind of a lone wolf. I really enjoy that. See, um, I love that so much. And in a relationship, I'm like, where's my alone time? Yeah, it's it's hard to find the balance yeah, for yeah. sure. But like, I like being with my girlfriend, but it's just like, okay, like, go with your friends. I don't have to go every time with your right. friend. I'll go like it's every like now and then. It's like you have to then. schedule alone time. <laughs> yeah. Whereas when I'm alone or like single, like, yeah, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of complaints. You bought your own house? No, I'm renting. Oh, okay. I'm not, I don't, I haven't, I mean, I'm not that cool. I oh, mean, I thought <laughs> you're like, oh, I paid for my house, cash. Like, <laughs> no, but I mean, it. like, I'm not, like, I don't have a roommate. I live alone, oh, okay. you know, so. Have you ever had a roommate? I've lived with my sister. Oh, and, um, oh in college? I don't know if that counts. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, I have, um, I've only lived, li- ever lived with Dawn, my sister. Um, but we've lived together on and off in several cities, actually. So, which is always great. Um, 
when she she briefly lived in LA and we were roommates, which was oh. amazing. And now she lives in Austin, but that's you know I'm happy for them. They love Austin. I'm like whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and then I've lived you. I've lived with a couple boyfriends, but um, oh. but yeah, no roommates. See, that would be like a bigger step, like living with a boyfriend as right. opposed to roommate. Right. Have you ever been in like a long term relationship? Yeah, I think my longest relationship was about four years. Oh, wow. so that's pretty long term. Yeah. Yeah. And then once it ends, you're like. What now? Or I mean, <laughs> shit. We're we're getting right into so, so, it. <laughs> no, I no. don't mean to. Yeah, no. I mean that we were together for a really long time, and you know, I think my pendulum swings pretty wide. Uh -huh. So it, it's very hard for me to date casually, which is why I said it's funny for me to say that I'm dating because I'm definitely more of a relationship person because if I like you, I really like you. And it's I'm like that, that with focus. my friends. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm like, like if I connect with a human and I enjoy being around you as a friend or as a boyfriend or whatever, I really like you. You know, I'm not lukewarm about people. So we were together for a really long time. And one day I was just like, this is for sure not going anywhere. Well, like we're not going to get married. Yeah. And I literally, we lived in this beautiful, oh my God, this beautiful condo, like two story, like three bedroom. It was just insane. I mean, my wow. life like on paper was perfect. In LA? Great job in LA. Yeah. Wow. And I literally, he was in the guest room working on something and I was in like the master bedroom and I was like, what are you doing, Grace? Oh my God. And I literally, and I mean, we knew it. I think we both knew it and nobody was saying it. And so I just kind of took the bull by the horns and I walked in and I was like, what are we doing here? Are we not doing this? And I was like, like, are we getting married? What are we doing? And he said to me, and I'll remember this for the rest of my life. He said, I'm too selfish to get married. Really? And I said back to him, I agree with you. <laughs> and I moved out of that house 48 hours later. I mean, you I don't fuck around. Everything. Yeah. I was like, okay. Because uh -huh. we both knew it, and I think it had been – we had both – we were guilty of dragging it on much longer than it should have. Really? That's so, like, sudden where it's just, like, two days later, I'm done with a four-year relationship. Yeah, that's I mean, like that's how I roll. I know my mind. I know my mind. And when I was – when I make up my mind, I, I'm – But what, but what what was the change, like, in in your your focus? Or why did your mind just, like, be like, okay, this is this is it. This is it. You know, I think it's so easy to get caught up in work or projects or mm -hmm. acting, whatever, and to kind of sweep things under the rug. Mm -hmm. And I knew in my heart of hearts that I'd been doing that for a really long time. And as I get older, the less time I want to waste, mm -hmm. not because I'm like, I'm old and I'm going to die. <laughs> but I just like, I want to be, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, my, my eggs are drying up. <laughs> I just want to, I don't want to pussyfoot around with things anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that I was definitely letting my work and the projects that I was working on at the time and my acting career and dance and everything that I'm doing, I was using it as kind of a crutch to not deal with the issue. Uh. And, you know, for whatever reason, I was like, I don't want to, what are we doing? Because we both knew it. And it wasn't like I was going to hurt him by saying that. I think it was just we both knew what was going on and I needed to just like turn the light on and be like, uh. okay, let's wrap it up. Like, <laughs> I wish you well, but like, we're not doing this. So yeah. we got to go. But I wonder how that works because it's like two independent people, like not even depending on each other. So I don't know the dynamic of the relationship if it's just like you're not really together. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that was also kind of a problem in the relationship anyway because he was an aerospace engineer. Oh, wow. And so we Completely were kind of – Completely different. Yeah, 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 which yeah. I loved. I uh -huh. loved that about him. Um, but I think it was hard for – he was kind of aloof. You know, mm -hmm. I think it was hard for him to emotionally kind of – experience things on the emotional level that I was at. And I, I loved that he was on the opposite side of the spectrum because I think that, you know, opposites attract and mm -hmm. I'm around, like my job is really insane and yeah. I'm around a lot of really big situations and high energies. And I really love that about him, but it did become an issue in the end. It was kind of like, I would like, I would book something and he'd be like, awesome. <laughs> and I'd be like, wait, no, you don't understand. Like I just beat out 10,000 people. Like yeah. the past 10 years of my life just came to a head and I booked this project. And what do you mean? Awesome. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like jump up and down with me. Yeah. So stuff like that. But I, but yeah, I guess you have to understand that he doesn't understand the whole exactly. thing. Like he's like, oh yeah, of course you're going to get it. I know it's kind of, it kind of bit me in the ass because mm. it's like, I, I loved dating somebody outside of the industry, but then also I was like, you have zero awareness of what the industry is yeah. as you shouldn't because you're not in it, but it's kind of, you know, give would, or take. Would you, able, would you ever be able to date an actor? I don't know. See, I don't, I mean, I don't want to like say like, I would never date another actor because I don't know. There's yeah. people that I've dated in the past that I never thought I would date. Um, there's a lot of people I've dated in the past that I wish I had never <laughs> dated. Um, 
but you know, like I said, I think somebody, cause I've kind of been through the ringer with that kind of stuff. I've had really poor judgment in the past. So I think for somebody, whoever they are, somebody would really, really have to just, I mean, forgive the like cliche manner of, but somebody would have to sweep me the hell off my feet. Like, uh. I mean, I'm talking like the world stop and I'm not looking for like some grand romance, but I'm just saying on an intellectual and emotional and physical level, all of those things, it would literally have to be like the world just stopped for me to kind of bother. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Is bother. that cynical? Yeah. Like don't even bother. With <laughs> Only because it's like, you know, like I said, that's just not where I'm at right now. Yeah. But that makes sense. But do you think that if you were with an actor, it would be like kind of a contentious relationship and you'd be like competing with each other? It, I don't know. I think it totally depends on the actor. You think it depends on the person? Yeah. The only th the only thing that I wouldn't like about that is because I I am so fascinated by people who have interests and talents and abilities that are removed from mine, hmm. which goes back to, you know, when I was dating that guy who was an aerospace engineer, because I love that. I love aeronautical shit. Like, I love NASA. I was totally into really? it. You, yeah. you get it? You, like, understand, like, everything? Or oh, no, just, I, mean, yeah. not, I mean, not, like, obviously to, to yeah. the extent that he was at, obviously, but, I mean, but I, I'm so fascinated by things that are outside of my world because mm -hmm. there's so much stuff going on, and I have so many interests, and I love people who have – Things that I don't, I'm not tapped into. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if dating another actor would be kind like of kind of incestuous. You know what oh, I mean? It's kind of like we're too, it's like maybe too close, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but then. You know, like, maybe tomorrow I'll meet some actor and I'll be like, holy shit. And I'll be engaged in a week and then it'll be Mrs. Gray's face and everything will be great. So who knows? <laughs> I'm open. Me. Yeah, but, <laughs> but then you could support that each other. Like when you're saying to your aerospace guy hey i got the part he's like okay whatever yeah cool but yeah but if you were with another actor he's like oh my god that's I know, so great like, holy shit yeah, yeah. He, i know yeah well i mean it, that's why you know it'd be nice if i could you know maybe like a director or like a hmm. producer i don't know somebody who would get it but's not doing it maybe uh -huh. i don't know but then i just feel like i'm like checking boxes for what i want in a guy and that's kind of creepy and you're like too. oh you're only dating the producer to get a part in his new movie <laughs> yeah or something. and then i would get shit for that for sure <laughs> like oh how did she get this lead role in this tv series <laughs> and i'm like well i've been hustling for 20 years you dicks and then they'd be like mm, yeah no mm -hmm. so yeah but uh back to back to your college life <laughs> okay were you wild in college or were you wild in high school um, I mean, I was pretty wild throughout, but I was definitely, I think in high school, I was more, in high school, I didn't have as much of an anchor as I did in college, because in college, I was in that really amazing BFA program, uh -oh. which I was like, I mean, it's, it was your whole life. It's like boot camp. I, I always joke, I literally had a cold for four fucking years, like no sleep, class all day, rehearsal all night, performing all night. I mean, that was my life. It was awesome. Um, so definitely, I mean, theater kids party. Like, theater kids are, I mean, talking to nerds. Like, every party is a theme, and it's, like, all out. So, I mean, yeah, we definitely partied, but, as, I mean, it was always with an end game. Whereas high school, I just kind of came into my own really, really young, and I had a really hard time relating to classmates. Like, I was hanging out with a lot of people who are older than I am, mm -hmm. which was because I kind of matured quickly, but then also I was also – you know, this teenager who was hanging out with people who were older, who were doing more adult things. And that was maybe, you know. Was it so, kind of bad that you were uh, hanging out with your sister's friends or? No, not at all. My sister and her friends were a great influence. But that was the thing. It was like I was relating more to people who were, you mm -hmm. know, around her age group or even older. So it was, I was just, you know, I was hormonal. I was angsty. <laughs> What, high school was not fun for me. Really? What kind of kid were you in high school? Were you, were you like the emo kid? Or like? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I was I was like a total, I was in the group of, like, I was one of the bad kids. Like, we were in detention. I had black hair, <laughs> um, theater kids, you know, like partying, like, like dressing doing all black. drugs. Oh, yeah, for really? sure. But I was always a good student, though. I always uh -huh. want to point that out. I was a big mess as far as just, like, pushing the limits and getting in trouble, but I graduated early from high school. I Really? Yeah, I was ready to go to college. I was ready to get out because I knew that I was like, this is just not my, you know, because some people are like, oh, my God, high school was awesome. I loved prom. <laughs> you know, that was not yeah. me. I loved college. College was very, very fun for me. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, not that college didn't have any bumps, but, you know, I high school just didn't, we didn't connect well. <laughs> Did you think you were bored in high school with, like, the people around yes. you and the people and, like, what you were learning? You're like, I know this. Like, I can't. Yeah, I was bored. I was not challenged in school. Um 
I was bored with the environment. I was bored with the people. I was bored with Prescott. It's a very small town, and mm. I had like I was like this girl with this big city dreams and just like crazy, you know. Uh-huh. I wanted to be free and <laughs> be Belle on the mountaintop, you know. Like so, it was it was a struggle. But so you were stuck, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt very claustrophobic in Prescott really? as a teenager. Yeah. Did you have like that one or two friends that are like into the same things that you were into? Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of theater <laughs> friends, and I had a lot of um, you know artsy friends. Mm. It's actually a pretty artsy city, um, but nobody, um, you know, I'm still like some of my very best friends are from Prescott, but not mm. that are actors. Um, um, they didn't, they didn't want to like pursue the dream with you and be like, hey, let's go together. Let's, let's move out together. I mean, no, because I went to, a lot of friends didn't get into the theater program that I got into, which mm. was really, really hard. Um, but, you know, I made new friends and they, you know, I think that all those friends have gone on to do other things that they liked more than acting. Oh, they did, they went through the whole like boot camp thing? They didn't even No, not, to... not in oh. Tucson. No, none oh. of those friends did. But I had a, a few friends audition, but they, they didn't get in, which oh, was a really okay. big bummer. And I, you know, was really <laughs> sad about that. Um, but now, but I'm still friends with a lot of them and now they're doing other things. You know, one of them is a writer. One of my best, best friends in the world, Kelly, is this like big to do at Southwest Airlines, you know, so they're doing things that they uh, are, you know, thriving in. So they're still successful, just like in different yeah, fields. Yeah, just not in this, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you still, keep, you still keep in contact with them? Oh, yeah. I was a yeah. bridesmaid in Kelly's wedding. Oh, really? Yeah, last year. So, I mean, yeah. So mm-hmm. I have, I have very close friends from Prescott. You said six weddings in one year? Well, that was an exaggeration. I know, but like... But that's how I feel. Oh, okay. I mean, two of my best friends just got engaged. Uh-huh. My sister got married last year. Kelly got married last year. Wow. It's a lot. And do, do they, does anyone say, hey, like, when's your turn? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, No, actually, thankfully, but I think that that's only because... I think if you know, <laughs> if you know me for longer than like five minutes, you know uh, that I'm like a go getter. Uh, so I'm not like, where's my husband? <laughs> you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. And again, like, God forbid I meet the man of my dreams tomorrow. I'd be like, let's do it. I'm uh, in. Um, but yeah, no, not, not right yeah. now. So it, I don't think anybody. You're fine right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. great. Yeah. So what are some of the wild stories? Like I, you say you're wild, but you're saying just like, I was just angsty. You know, it was just like you, what drugs did you do? Did you smoke weed in high school? Uh, oh shit. I did smoke weed in high school. Um, there's a lot of cocaine in Prescott. Really? So I've done a fair bit of that. Whoa. Um, and would, a lot of drinking. Does that amplify your personality or does it like mellow you out? Cause I feel like you're oh already God. amped up. <laughs> no offense to you. <laughs> I'm not boring. Um, oh man. I mean, it's hard to, I mean, I think probably back then it probably did, but that was also a long, long time ago. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was almost like 15 years ago. I'm getting up there, <laughs> foot in the grave. Um, were you more of a quiet kid in high school? Or, or I don't you know if like... I would say quiet. I would say maybe brooding. Mm-hmm. I definitely kept myself uh, a lot more than I did, that I do now. Uh, but that's so... also just part of me being like, yep, this is me and I own it now. Whereas uh, back then I was more, I was definitely a lot more shy back then. So did you think like the drugs like helped your personality? No, it wasn't like a shy thing. It was a it was a mind numbing thing. Really, I was like, I'm fucking miserable. I gotta get out of here. That I don't bad. like this. Yeah, and it was like, I mean, I like probably you know, I think that's why a lot of of people drink and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I just need to get away for a few hours. You know what I mean? You're not giving Prescott that. like the best image. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's really? a beautiful place, but you know what? It's it, it's a rich white retirement town. Oh, it's beautiful. There's a lot of art <clears throat> there. There's a lot of hiking but it is a rich white retirement town. Mm -hmm. So for somebody like me who was like three and I was like, I want to be an actor. It was not the place for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And don't get me wrong. I have some of my happiest memories in my entire life are doing theater in Prescott. I did community theater there that my very first play Mm -hmm. was in Prescott when I was like, Oh shit, I'm going to go and be a Broadway star. Like, (laughs) don't get me wrong. And I love it. My grandmother's there. I'm it's it's a very fond place for me to go back. I don't, I'm not like ah fuck Prescott. Mm-hmm. It was just as a teenager, it was a struggle. <laughs> Did your parents knew like what you were into? Did they know what you were into? Oh yeah, I was ho- you know for being somebody who was in so much trouble, I was not good at staying out of trouble. Like I was always getting caught. I was always in with, trouble with drugs. Oh, with everything. Really? I was and- always in trouble. But- <laughs> always in trouble. I was always grounded. But in trouble with your parents or in trouble with the police. With my parents. It never got like... No. I mean, maybe, I mean, and by maybe, I mean definitely a lot of close calls. uh, But uh, but no, no legal trouble, (laughs) thankfully. (laughs) But what did your parents say when they're like, hey, my daughter's doing cocaine in uh, room 5A? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. What is room 
five was. I was That's in like a history. hotel That's, at 14. That's the history room. There's like 5A and 5B. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, you know, my parents were very strict. And I think that that kind of, you know, made me more rebellious uh, than maybe I would have been if they'd been a, a, more, a little more lax with me. Um, but, you know, they were great. My parents are so smart, so loving, and they handled me. Th- I mean, I can't imagine anybody raising me any better. Like, they just did a terrific job, and I, it was always an open communication. Like, what are you doing, man? Mm-hmm. And then, I of course, I would break down, and I'd be like, well, I'm unhappy. You know, I don't like this. I don't like that, or this mm-hmm. happened, or whatever. So, oh, so they helped you instead of just being, like, disciplining you and just making yeah. things worse. Yeah, no, they handled it. I mean, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. They're, I, God, I will always live with the guilt of what I put them through as a yeah. teenager. So that's why you say you don't want to have children because you think <laughs> they're going to be just like you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What a mess. But no, I actually just genuinely, I don't know that um, motherhood is something that I want to experience mm. nor would be good at. Mm. <laughs> um, but I also, you know, a lot of my friends... I have a lot of friends who are like in their mid 40s and they're like, uh, I always said that. And then I woke up one day and I was like, we're having a baby. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm you sure never that, know. I, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. totally open to my mind changing. But um, were, was your yet. sister like, like partying like you or like into the same thing? No, my sister, I mean, she definitely had, you know, her phases here and there, but I just not to the extremes that, <laughs> that mine were. <laughs> How did it get so extreme? Because you think that like being introduced to drugs would be like your older sister, your older sibling, like introducing oh, no. you. No, it was you like going off on your own. No, just... it was just my friends. Yeah, I was just in, in with the wrong crowd. I was with the bad kids. How well, how uh, were your parents strict? You said they were very strict and it didn't seem that, that way. I mean, it was just, hmm, that's a great question. You know, I think there's just a lot of focus on, you know, education, you got to do well in school, you got to do your homework, you can't stay out late, like no drinking, no drugs, like here's your curfew. And I was like wanting to push against all of that. Uh, okay. So you're so. just like, no, f- fuck that. I'm going to do, I'm going to drink whenever I want. Like <laughs> I'm like 10 a.m. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. But, um, well, actually I'm probably sure I did, but, um, but no, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just dumb teenage shit, you know? Uh-huh. And it was just exacerbated by being in a small town where there's not a lot of outlets for teenagers to you know, I mean, theater was my only outlet. Yeah. So that didn't fulfill you enough to like, be I think only because straight. I was just a teenager. Like uh-huh. you're, it's awful. <laughs> like you're hormonal and you're awkward uh-huh. and things are happening and you start to feel like you want to be an adult, but you're not, you know, you don't know, how, you don't know what insurance is. You don't know how to pay rent. Yeah. You don't know shit about the world, but you feel like you do and you want to be an adult. But you know, it's like, it's just awkward growing pains. And it's so, also, you think this is the whole world around you. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and like I said, I just felt very claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. But again, like I wasn't just like a complete asshole. I mean, I definitely was, but I also <laughs> had a lot of good times. You know, I wasn't always, I wasn't constantly fighting with my parents or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like we were always kind of in this together. And I was like, uh, we kind of, it was a season that I had to uh, grow through mm. and put behind me gladly. <laughs> Were you like a, an asshole to your teachers? And Oh, for sure. Really? I was always, I mean, <laughs> they might disagree. I never, I've always, even when I've been a total rebellious jerk, I've always greatly respected my parents and greatly loved my parents and have felt very taken care of by my parents. Mm-hmm. My teachers in high school can go fuck themselves. But why? Well, okay. Okay. You know what? I have a very good story. Uh Okay. So one time, and this is just a perfect, like, (laughs) like the juxtaposition of me being this just complete madhouse, but while also being a good student, this is a perfect story to encapsulate all this. Mm -hmm. So we did in my theater program, this play every single year called Dolls. That was like a sex education play. Mm -hmm. It was like a 45 minute play. So we would do it seven times a day during one day of the year for each period. Cause in high school, there's like eight periods or something. And there was one day of the year where we would do it just all day. So it's an excused school sponsored absence. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was in the play. I was one of the lead roles. I was killing it, blah, blah, blah. So I come to my some bullshit class like social studies or statistics, <laughs> like something that's just like meh. Statistics isn't bullshit. It's it's, it's totally... real life. You can use <laughs> it in life. <laughs> no, I know you can't. No, you can't. I can Google that shit. And so he po- they would post the grades like every, I don't know, like maybe once a month so you could kind of see your progress and see, you mm. know, if you were failing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, you're going down seeing and I saw a section where I was missing um, like a 25 point something. And I had a zero for it. And I was always, you know, I was 
part of me getting out of Prescott was doing well in school. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like devastated. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, it's not that I forgot something. What happened? So I asked my teacher. I forget his name. I could tell you the shirt he was wearing that day. And all my friends from Prescott will know who he is, but what? I can't think of his name. How do you remember his shirt? What's his shirt? He was wearing like a polo that was cream colored with a big mustard yellow stripe around the chest. Yeah, you like know a, the shirt. Like, like a Charlie like, Brown type yes, thing? Yes, <laughs> exactly. But like, oh my God. And so I went over and I was like, what? Like, what is this 25 point? What did I, what did I miss? And he was like, oh, well, there was a pop quiz. And I was like, mm. well, when? And he was like, oh, on such and such date. And I was like, oh, well, that was when I was in a school sponsored excused absence for the arts, educating children about sexual things did you say it in that tone oh yeah i was pissed and i was like because this is what because i asked him i was like so can i make it up because it was a school sponsored absence like it was an excused absence and he was like no and i was like so you're telling me that you're penalizing me for being involved in extracurricular activities Uh and having a school excused absence and you are penalizing me 25 points that will affect my grade and he was like yeah you weren't here you don't get to make it up and i literally threw a fit i was like this is bullshit and he was like what did you say to me and i remember him like slamming his hands on my desk and getting all up in my face and i was like that's bullshit and he sent me to the principal's office well yeah i was justified <laughs> and, like but, what students pissed about missing a pop quiz like okay yeah. come on and the, and if you took you would have gotten like 25 oh for sure yeah. i mean i would have done great but i was it was a big zero because uh-huh. i just wasn't there so what did the principal say was he on your side or was anybody on your side <laughs> i don't remember actually what the principal said the, just... <laughs> i went to the the principal wasn't there a lot it was the vice principal a lot and i was kind of mm. in and out of there quite a bit so it was just kind of like me and i was like hey and then i just sat there for the rest of that class and then i just went to my next period so uh-huh. i was like wait did i just get out of class for like an hour for free like why didn't i do that more often but so yeah you... so that was the stuff i would be mad about oh. Okay, that's justifiable. Yeah. But being, um, but not calling bullshit to your teacher or like cussing out your teacher. No, Have not you, without a reason. Okay. I remember the only other time I got real bitchy with, with the teacher once is that I was on my cell phone, mm-hmm. like a really cool like flip phone back like in the, the day. Like the Sidekick 2 or something. Yeah. <laughs> and not even that. Oh, God. <laughs> and I remember a teacher being like, oh, <laughs> give me your phone. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'm texting my mom. I'm not giving you my phone. Uh-huh. And she was like, give me your phone. And I was like, no. Like, what if they're, and I didn't say this, but of course, it's like, you can't take away a student's cell phone. There's emergencies. Uh-huh. Shit happens. There's earthquakes. Like, there's bad people. No, you're not taking my phone. And she was like, then you can go to the principal's office. I was like, sweet. No problem. They know me there. So those were probably my two, my two biggest meltdowns. But were, justified. Were you really texting your mom? No. <laughs> No, not at all. So it was bullshit. So <laughs> she was justified in her argument. But I said, I think I was texting my friend, but I think what I said to her is, what if I was texting my mom? Like, you mm. don't know. Like, maybe I'm trying to arrange, like, a pickup or something. Oh, okay. So I tried to, like, argue with her. Yeah. Um, but she was like, I don't care. Give me your phone. And I was like, no. And she was like, go to the office. I was like, no problem. And then Peace. you just go again. Yeah, and, I and you're went. like, okay, I get out of, get out of class. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird, it's a, it's a backward system. What would you get in detention for? Um... I got detention a lot for passing notes with my friends in class, which Mm. is hilarious because school gets out. I don't remember because it's been so long, but school gets out at like a certain hour. Mm -hmm. And then there's like an hour in between when I would have rehearsal for theater. Um, And so you would have detention for that hour. So it was great because it just forced me to do all my homework before I had rehearsal. So oh, it oh, ended you would up being have, kind of awesome. Okay, school would end, and then detention, and then... And then rehearsal, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because so okay. rehearsal didn't start until like 4.30 or something. Oh, so okay. people could go get dinner or whatever and then come back. Mm-hmm. So it was perfect because I would just hang out, and then it was just me and all my friends in detention because we all got detention <laughs> together. So we would just like hang out, do homework, and then I would go to rehearsal. <laughs> You like work the system in your favor. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Even though it you shouldn't do work it. that way. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Like that's not how you discipline teenagers, but hey. I made it work. What is your sister into or what is she like uh, doing? Well, my sister is a big consultant at EY. She's Mm -hmm. also a very talented singer, songwriter, piano player. Uh And she is a writer. I mean, I could, she's amazing. She's Mm -hmm. doing a million things that are all very exciting. She's about to start her own lifestyle blog. She's writing a book right now. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're not doing as much as she is? No, not at all. Um, She's so... I mean, she's so gracious and wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've never felt in competition with her ever. Really? And no, never. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she's so supportive of everything I'm doing, and I'm so supportive of everything she's doing. We've only ever, like, brought each other up, so Mm -hmm. no. Is there days where you're like, I I feel like I'm not doing as much as I could be doing? 
today or this weekend or something. I mean, I think I always feel like that. Really? Yeah, I think that's probably where the workaholic kind of thing comes from. It's like, well, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do this. Mm -hmm. Do you get anxiety about it? Or like, are you able to like channel that into something? I don't get anxious about it just because, I mean, I, I certainly, that was kind of a maturing process for me to not get anxious about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's just kind of fun, you know, because I'm in it. I'm not in this, you know, in acting to make it by a certain date. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm just... I love LA. I want to live in LA and I've always loved acting and that's what I want to do. And I'm here to do it. So, so you, it's not like, Oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing uh, this. It's like, well, maybe I could try this. Maybe I could try that. Who knows? So you're like the, the point in your life right now is you're content with it. You're fine with everything going on right now. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I mean, no, I, what I mean by that is that I'm not wanting for anything. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? I have a roof over my head. I have an amazing group of friends. I have a job. I have insurance. You know, I have all the good things, mm -hmm. but that being said, not in a negative or anxious way. I'm always striving for the next thing. Mm -hmm. I'm always hoping to get a bigger role on the next thing. I'm always hoping to get a bigger commercial on the next thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but it doesn't sh like keep me up at night. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely days when I'm like, why the fuck? Oh God, <laughs> why did I want to be an actor? Like, why yeah. can't I just move to Texas and be fat and be a teacher? But those <laughs> are so short-lived spells. Yeah. Uh, oh my yeah. God. It's the dream. But I wouldn't be happy doing that. I'm happy doing this. Really? So. You're, you're, that's what I said. Like you're content with your life, but you do want more. I mean, I think I, I, I can't not do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my, not to get all meta, but my soul is so like this kind of acting and art and performing really just fucking calls to me. It just has my name written all over it and I can't not do it. And in this business, like you're your own person. You have to do your own thing. No one's telling you what to do. Like, right. Yeah. You're, you're able to do that, like have that motivation to do everything at once and just like, I'm going to do, you really? Oh yeah. I have ambition for days, like mm -hmm. to the point where it can be detrimental, mm -hmm. where I can burn myself out and things like that. So it's, really? Oh yeah. Have so you... I have to try to be a little more balanced because I can totally be like, go, 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 go. And then I get sick or go, 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 go. Oh. And then, you know. So you literally work until you get sick. I mean, I can sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I try, the thing is with me is that I'm like, if I have a spare mm -hmm. moment, you know, if there's like a day of the week when I'm like, oh wait, I don't that day of the week's looking a little light <laughs> and then I'll cram it with 10 things. And then mm -hmm. I'm like more stressed out than I was before. And I'm like, Grace, why do you just yeah. let yourself have the day? You yeah. know, like it's that kind of thing. I have to take the, you know, be able to find peace and stillness where I can to so kind what, of refill myself. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do for those days that are empty or like to find that stillness? I mean, I'm, super super boring i love i'm a big bookworm i love mm. reading i'm all about i love watching tv shows i love watching films so i'm i and i i really really love the house that i'm living in mm. i just adore it i have this big gigantic window that looks on like all this beautiful like green so i i'm totally all about netflix and chill <laughs> on that couch in my yoga pants with my little cup of coffee uh -huh. my dogs so just Wait. really relaxing just at home so just a day at home yeah. You don't like like going out to the beach or like going somewhere like, okay, this is like my happy place over here. No matter how lame that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm not a beach person at all. Um, I'm actually severely hydrophobic, so I don't like water at all. <laughs> I don't like the ocean at all. Um, do you like sun I, at all? I, I mean a little bit. I'm a vampire is what I'm getting at. Uh, um, I definitely... You know, the beach is definitely very relaxing, but that's not, like, my go-to. Like, if mm. I'm on vacation in Mexico, like, that's one thing. Uh -huh. But if it's just, like, here in L.A., that's not necessarily my cup of tea. Um, I love, you know, I love hiking. I think that that's a really – if you can find a hike that's not, you know, Runyon Canyon where there's 800 people and yeah. 47,000 dogs. Yeah. And you're, like, you but know, you're, rubbing you're elbows. Though. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. But that's why I wouldn't do Runyon. But, like, uh -huh. you know, hiking would be nice. Or, like, mm. or you know, like the Getty Center, the Getty Museum gorgeous mm -hmm. gorgeous such a creative space a quiet space like that outdoor garden area like that would be something that would be really cool if i had oh, the time okay. mm -hmm. how long have you been in la uh six years uh -huh. how, how were the first like couple years the first couple years were really surprised i mean oddly i worked a lot uh -huh. which i was really really grateful for i was an anxiety ridden mess <laughs> my first couple I mean, my first, the first year that I was in LA, like I was just a stress ball because mm -hmm. I was just like so fearful. And so, you know, I moved out here not knowing what the hell I was doing, not knowing anybody. I knew my sister, thank God. So you guys moved out together? No, she had already, she was living oh. here at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then she let you like crash at her place? 
well we were roommates so i uh, I, oh, okay, I had yeah, yeah yeah so i essentially yes but yeah, i was yeah. paying for it <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah um so they were great it was a lot of growing pains you know it was i i got a job at a coffee shop i interned mm. you know i did all the things yeah what was the first thing okay the first do you remember like the first day or first week you get here and oh yeah and then what do you, so what, do you well. what do you do like how do you find that job at a coffee shop I mean we moved into an apartment in Brentwood um so my oh. first week was just a lot of like freaking out and <laughs> unpacking and like what am I doing here um and then what I did is I just kind of walked around you know the little shops in Brentwood and just took applications from everybody like oh, the really? little boutiques and the little like Italian places you know down in that little area down there um, and, and coffee bean was the first one who hired me. So of course, the so coffee bean in Brentwood. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but do you remember like your first audition or like, how do you start as an actor? Oh my God. Yeah. What's like the first step? Cause like people think, oh, you just come to LA, you audition, you get a part. That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is that not that it? I mean, fun. is that like um... how La La Land does it? <laughs> I know. And according to my La La Land schedule, I have about three years and I got to be married, famous and have a kid. So yeah. no pressure. Um, no, I mean, I was really fortunate. I got repped from a senior showcase from the BFA program that I was in. So thank God for that. Repped meaning like you have an agent after that? I had a manager. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I mean is a gold mine. So mm -hmm. I was very, very fortunate to have that. And I'm still with her. I adore her. I thank God for her every day. Wait, so this was in Arizona though. Mm -hmm. So they come from LA yeah, to she Arizona? Yeah, flew out to see my senior showcase. Yeah. Was it like, like, is that, well, because it's such an intense, intensive thing that like they're finding the talent over there. Yeah. Like they would fly out. They flew out like a bunch of casting directors and agents and managers to oh. come see it. Yeah. And they're like, Hey, this kid's got something. <laughs> <laughs> I see a spark in your kid. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, essentially. Yeah. I mean, you always know throughout the program that that's like a thing. So we did, um, you do a scene and then you do a Shakespeare monologue. Mm. And then if they want to chat with you, they can set up a little one-on-one -on -one afterwards, mm. kind of like a callback or something. And you just kind of like shoot the shit. Oh. And, um, so that ended up leaded leading to like you know emailing back and forth and then she would actually send me um a couple self tapes when I was still in school in Arizona so I could send them over to her and then um like a couple weeks after that she like officially signed me before I ever moved to LA uh, how do you know it's um, legit and not, not just some like guy who's like I want to start my own management company and I want to like <laughs> rep I mean I think I totally didn't at all I think I was just hoping that the school brought in legit uh, people which they did thankfully oh, okay, yeah, yeah. but I think back then I was so naive I was just like I mean I hope you're not a serial killer cool <laughs> where do I sign yeah um so yeah so I had her so I she was kind of holding my hand through a lot of it but you got to get on the breakdowns immediately which is like a whole other beast that makes no sense is that that casting uh the website or, Correct. Yeah, uh -huh. like LA Cat, like Breakdown Express. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which you know is LA Casting, Actors Access, Casting Frontier. There's mm -hmm. like thirty trillion of them. You know. So then, what does your um, manager do? Does she help you get through that, or is it like, like yeah, you she find kind of it. like showed me like what to do, and because it's a big process, you got to upload all your information, all your sizes, everything you've ever fucking done in your life. Like uh -huh. it's, I mean, it's like a week long process. I remember mm -hmm. sitting at the coffee bean that later <laughs> hired me because I didn't have Wi Fi yet in the apartment, being like, <laughs> like trying to input it all. So uh -huh. you. You move to LA, you hope to get a rep, you got to get on the breakdowns and then they start submitting you and you hope you get auditions and then you hope that you don't suck at the auditions. You kind of go from there. You start out non-union and so your manager submits you truck. Yeah. Or, or you, you can submit yourself. You can. Okay. So like if someone comes off fresh without a manager, they can still do that. Yeah. They can self-submit for the, non-union stuff. Then the manager comes in and like makes a deal or, or do they get you stuff that uh, someone without a manager wouldn't do? I mean, I think it definitely helps. I mean, luckily, that's something I didn't experience. Mm. Um, except for like, you know, actually, that's not necessarily true. Because if you're doing like student films or something like that, she wouldn't necessarily be a part of that process. Because okay. that's not illegitimate work. But it's also not something that she's necessarily worried about because you're not getting paid. Yeah, yeah. So she's, you know, there's nothing, there's no like contractual shit for her to deal with. She's just like, yeah, okay, have fun. Yeah, yeah. Get just something go, good for your real. Yeah. yeah, you get your real, get your experience and do whatever. Yeah, yeah. so you just, you know, you kind of do that and you audition. I was really fortunate to get a lot of, you know, non-union work is great because there's so much more non-union work than union work. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's a lot of really random shit. It's like <laughs> super random, like sizzle reels and like weird shit. But it's all great. So you uh -huh. just, you know, you do that and then eventually you get 
hopefully Taft Heart lead, which means you can become SAG eligible and then work your way into the union and then, you know, just along the lines get bigger and better projects. Is that how you became SAG eligible, the Taft Heart lead thing? Yeah, I, I got Taft Heart lead on a project by a producer and then I became SAG eligible and then you hope to stay eligible for as long as you can or like SAGI as it's called, um, as they say in the Sa- biz. In the biz, yeah, LA. <laughs> El <Sac does. laughs> um, So then I was SAGI for a while because you want to milk it as long as you can because like I said, there's a lot more non-union work than union work. SAGI, so you can't, you're SAG eligible eligible meaning you can become union if you pay the fees right you can kind of it's kind of gray area you can kind of straddle the line between union and non-union but you get technically i think it's three union jobs so i got taft heart lead so then you get three freebies Mm -hmm. and then on the third one you have to pay the initiation fee or else you can't work the show okay which is like was it like two grand or something no it's like it's like thirty two hundred dollars thirty two it's a lot of Uh, money yeah uh and i did I forget what mine were. It was like I got like a commercial that was SAG and then something else. And then I booked my first show, which was Grey's Anatomy. Wow. And I had, I mean, I'm talking like a two-hour window to fill out like 15 pages of paperwork, figure out what my name was going to be for the rest of my life. You know, I was like, oh, my God. You know, like Julia Roberts isn't a real name. And uh-huh. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go with what I've been doing. You know, it's a lot. And I had literally like a two-hour window to Why? do it. I almost didn't book the show because Why was SAG it? was behind like processing uh-huh. my stuff. Why was it two hours? Like you got the gig and then I was shooting the next day. Oh, okay. And I got it at like four p.m. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh shit!" So at first <laughs> you're like, it was like just a plethora of emotions because you're so excited, you're completely in disbelief, you're shitting your pants, uh-huh. you got to get to a costume fitting, you're at your day job, you're trying to fill out all this paperwork. I'm trying to decide if I want to be Heather Grace Hancock for the rest <laughs> of my life or if I want to be Billy Jones. I don't know. Yeah. So it's it's that would have worked too. It was. I mean, yeah. I feel like I could totally have made Billy Jones work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a whirlwind for sure. Amazing. So many fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. What was the Taft Hartley thing you got? Um, it was for. Um, just like on a short film, I think. Oh, really? And the producer was just like, I think you got some kid. And I was like, sweet, you want to hook it up? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Um, because that's a lot of people come, they, they hope to get Taft Hartley right. as opposed to what, like getting three vouchers. Is that still a thing? Well, you can get, I think, I think the Taft Hartley is the voucher, but some people uh, do it by doing extra work, uh-huh. but that's kind of like the frowned upon way to do it. So uh-huh. I was happy that I didn't do it that way. Um, Oh, but, so so you auditioned for this role and then right, so, and it was like a non-union project, but they like a producer. It's very odd. Like they have the opportunity to give like three Taft Hartleys per project, uh, and I just happened to be somebody who was lucky enough to get Taft Hartley. Okay, yeah, and then you can become eligible. Okay, because I've I've done extra work and people are like, let's try to get Taft Hartley. Yeah, you. That's exactly that's yeah. what people do. They're like, oh shit, we gotta get vouchers. Yeah. Like you know, all the hungry actors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I have to go stand out in front of the camera. Yeah, like, um, and then it just becomes like this weird, like kind of disingenuous, like trying to like rub elbows with the producers. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know, which is, I'm. T- <laughs> <laughs> are you good at auditioning? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for so long. Uh. Um, it's hard to say that though, because I mean, auditioning is auditioning and working on set are very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, you have to build the technique for both. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have worked with a lot of great teachers and a lot of great classes. So yeah, I think I'm a good auditioner. I can always be better. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm very, I'm very confident in my auditioning skills at this point, which I would hope so. I've been yeah. doing this long enough. <laughs> Six but years isn't still, that long, though. But I mean, think of how many auditions I go on. How many? I audition- went to an audition today. Oh, really? Yeah. How'd it go? I think it went really well. Thank yeah. you for asking. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you think you got it, or do they let you know, or do? I think how I will get go? a call back. Yeah. Okay, so it was your first audition. For this project, yeah. And then you get a callback and then what? And then you book it. Or, I mean, it just depends on the project. I've, I've booked shit with ever, without ever having a callback. Also, sometimes you'll get what's called pinned, which is just like like a play on literally getting your headshot pinned to a bulletin board. But they just, and now it just, we still say that even though that doesn't physically happen anymore. Yeah. Um, but or you can be put on a bail. You know, it just depends on the project. Pinned meaning like you're on a short list or is that what the callback is? A pin... Uh, a pin is pretty much like being put on a veil where they're like, by the way, like it's either you or this other girl. Mm-hmm. So like, please keep your schedule open for all the shoot dates. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll let you know. And in, in which case you can book it or you can be unpinned and then you uh, don't book it. And you're like, <laughs> thanks anyway. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so when you were like not getting roles, were you taking that personally or were you just like, okay, I, I understand that like that this, I'm not going to get everything. Yeah, no, I've never taken it personally. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've definitely had, 
like 107,000 like mini breakdowns where I'm like, what am I doing with my life? But I've never taken it personally because, you know, I, I'm very well rounded about how this whole industry works and I understand, like I get it. There's many, many times there's no rhyme or reason to this industry, mm-hmm. which you have to see as a plus because it's like, any day of the week, my entire life can change. Yeah. Anytime my phone rings, my life could change. Literally. Yeah. Like, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because I still never answer my phone. <laughs> um, but. I see it going off, like, on your on the desk right now or on the table right now. Are you just looking, like, it. hopefully, like, hey, call oh back, my God, call back. God, yeah, no. Hopefully. Um, I'm not missing anything. I'm, I'm sure I'm not. Um, but. Do you remember how many auditions you went through before you booked something? Like, when I moved to L.A.? Yeah, when you first got here. Well, you know, I had a very, very blessed experience because I booked something like the second week I got here, oh, good which is you. really, really, yeah, it was very, very, <laughs> it, very rare. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I yeah. was, sh- I was shocked. I'm still shocked. Um, I was very, very fortunate. So you were aware that that doesn't happen normally right? where you think where some people might be like, Oh, this is easy. I can do this like until I die. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that some people, you know, I, ha- I have a very, I have a very grounded perspective of how this works. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, the statistics, not that I learned that from well, college. You should have asshole. because it would have worked <laughs> in this business. But I understand that the statistics of this industry are absolutely fucking dismal. Yeah. So I have a very healthy understanding of how it works. So no, I've never taken it personally. I, I'll get frustrated and I'll be bummed mm-hmm. because I don't know that there's any other field in the world where you go to hundreds of job interviews where you do the job for free mm-hmm. and you may never book any of them. So that can wear on you. It takes a certain uh, strength of a person to do that and to want to do that. Yeah, to keep going and striving for it. Do you know like the longest time between uh, like booking something? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I for sure probably like not worked for a whole year before. Really? You weren't able to book anything? I don't think I've booked. I think there was one year, like calendar year where I didn't book something. But then there's also been times like the most beautiful time in my entire life. I booked two pilots in a film Mm -hmm. in the same week. Wow. Like, I mean, that's just how it goes. There's dry spells and there's super wet spells. Yeah, yeah. So you just kind of take it as it comes. So you understand the, like, you don't freak out when it's like, I haven't worked in a year. What am I doing with my life? Like, oh, no. I mean, you definitely do that. And then I call my mom and I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> and then she talks me off the edge and then I'm all pumped up again, you know, and I'm the superhero with the cape flapping behind me. And I'm like, oh, because, you know, I'm not. I'm totally open to the idea of one day being like, yeah, fuck this. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm aging at three times the normal rate. I'm stressed all the time. But I'm totally not there yet. I have my moments. Don't get me wrong. It's tough. It's a really tough time. You think there will Um, be a time where you're like, okay, I'm throwing in the towel now? Not throwing in, like, giving up. I don't really see that. But, but like, yeah, I mean, there may be a day when I'm like, you know, but I really kind of want to do ballet from now on. Like, uh screw this. And I'm open to that happening. I don't foresee that happening. I'm I'm a million miles away Mm -hmm. from that perspective right now. Um, which is saying a lot because literally just yesterday I was like, mom, fuck, what am I doing? This is awful. Like, this is so awful. Um, so you have your mother to go like back to, you have, yeah, they're so supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And my sister, my dad, and my grandma, they're all amazing. They pump me up, Mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I'm open to a changing, but I'm so, I mean, I'm just, I really am just obsessed with it. I love everything about it. Like Mm -hmm. the only way that I can describe it is that when I'm on a set working, it's just the center of the universe for me Mm -hmm. and there's just nothing else like it. So I can't, I can't not do it. It is like literally a whole nother world because they're creating something else. Yeah. And everybody, it's the most creative place on the planet. There's actors, there's the art director, there's my hair person, my makeup person, and they're all so good at what they do. Like I love being in LA because everybody that you're working with on a set is the fucking best at what they do. Yeah, And it's so inspiring and it's so fun being around that much creative energy. It's just... There's nothing like it. Yeah, and they'll literally work until, like, their legs don't move. Oh, like, yeah. the crew oh members God. or whatever, they'll go until, like, 3 in the morning. Oh, yeah. I've been on set at, like, 4.30 in the morning, and yeah. everybody's half dead. But there's you'll uh, there's no place on earth that has more love on it than a set. You just got to do it. Like, that's yeah. that's what people are here yeah, for. I yeah, I got to do it. Um, what was the first thing you booked, the short film? The first thing I booked was actually, like, a... It was kind of like a sizzle reel, but it was for a reality TV show. Uh So it was like we were trying to pitch a reality TV show. So they hired actors to do like 
simulations yeah, yeah. of what the reality show would be. So it was essentially like shooting a real reality TV show for like a week. Okay. A scissor reel is like a trailer, like trying to pitch the show to Right. People. That's oh, okay. what they were doing. But we sh like, we literally shot like an episode of The Bachelor. Like that's kind of what oh, it was. Right. We were like in this big mansion and we were, they were like, now cry and, and pretend to make out with so, like it was like, amazing. Really? It was did, so much did fun. Did you have to like cry on cue and stuff? Oh, yeah, because, really? you know, they do, like, the little confessionals, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, where yeah. you're, like, and then, like, I don't know what, like, I saw Brad and Tracy, like, over in the pool, and I remember, like, talking to the producer, and they were, like, because they just kind of, like, fed off what the natural relationships were in me, and this guy had kind of, like, made friends, and so they were, like, ju mm. you know, milking it for everything, yeah. trying to make it look more dramatic, you know, kind of, like, real reality TV. Yeah, yeah, producing it. Right, and yeah, I was, yeah. like, I mean, and in between cuts, I was, like, do you guys just want me to cry? And they were, like, can you cry? And oh. I was, like, yeah. And so I remember, like, crying, and I was so upset, and my heart was broken. It was a great time. Really? Yeah. You can do that, on, and then, like, the next take, you're, like, okay, I'm fine. Let's oh, move. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Had, did you make out with a person during that time? <laughs> I did. Really? Yeah. So how does that go? Like you just meet like, hey, we're going to make out today. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not weird, but that's kind of my job. Like, I mean, I, yeah, it's, <laughs> you don't really, there's always kind of like a, yeah, this is weird, but then yeah. you're over it. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's, nobody's like weird about it because everybody knows that it's just part of the job, but yeah, yeah it's like it's doing weird. any other job. Yeah. But it's, a, yeah, I mean, it, there's not <laughs> <laughs> like the, when I know that I'm going to be kissing somebody, I'm like, okay, I'm not getting any onions today. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I'm going to try not to have coffee breath. Um, I don't know that a lot of people outside of acting have to do that. Um, no. but yeah, it's weird, but it doesn't. I'm so used to it. Had you been on a set before that time? Like, did you have sets in like Arizona or anything? Like a, like a television set? Or, or like been on, like had any prior experience to being on a set? Yeah, I did a lot of student films and like, uh, just like indie projects in Arizona when oh, I was okay. in college. Yeah. So it wasn't just like throwing you into the, into the fray. I mean, it definitely was, oh, but well. no, but I, I, I totally, you know, I felt confident, you know, I knew. I understood frames and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because you were a theater actor. Isn't that different than like acting on screen? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, wow. Yeah. So that I mean, was, that a, was a hard transition for me. Oh, hard. It's still, I mean, it's still something, you know, they're not, because I do a lot of live, you know, like live theater and screen acting uh -huh. are just so like, they are not even kissing co cousins. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. so, so, so different. But no, I was fortunate enough that my, the school that I went to, I got my BFA from the School of Theater, Film, and Television. Mm -hmm. So we worked really, really closely with one another. So I was able to do a lot of student projects and indie projects of that. What's something that, that like a, a theater actor can't like uh, do on, on a screen? Like what's something that's Like hard? something that's challenging? That's, yeah, that's something... Continuity. Oh, like doing the same thing over and over again? Oh my God, yeah. It's Because live theater is so, you know, it's totally ethereal. Whatever happens, happens, and then it's gone. But you would think that like you're... you're uh, What's the word? Uh, rehears Lines? Rehearsing. <laughs> no, you think that you're rehearsing like over and over again. We're like, it is stuck in your head. You're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Right. But like in theater, they're like, okay, then cross to the couch and then exit stage left. Uh -huh. Whereas on camera, it's like, okay, your forefinger moved this hair from the left side of your face. And then you turned and looked at that spoon. Mm. I mean, it's so, it's just times a billion okay. and you can't. It's more exact because it is like a close-up of your face. It's so much more calculated, which is mm -hmm. hard because live theater, for me personally, is a lot easier to get kind of lost in the moment as an actor because it's just like whatever happens, happens. Whereas on screen, it's a lot – there's so much more happening in your head mm -hmm. while still being creative, while still being present, while trying not to look like a deer in fucking headlights, <laughs> while trying to look sexy and have like your good angle and not have like a weird double chin and remember the fucking lines, you know? Uh, it's a lot. How do you remember the lines? Like, how do you just read them? Are you like good at just reading it once and having it memorized? I mean, I definitely read it more than once, but not because I'm trying to memorize. I kind of inadvertently memorize just by working on the sides so much. Um, Memorization does come pretty easily to me, but again, I've just been doing it for so many years. I don't even think about it anymore. Um, oh, okay. You said you work on the sides, like meaning the sides are like the small versions of the script. I mean, technically, I think that's where that term comes from. But yeah, the sides just meaning the lines. Oh, okay. The script. And, and do you like break down the lines, like line by line, and say, "Hey, this is she's saying this, but she really means this." It depends on the project. I mean. You know, like today I did a commercial for Chrysler. Chrysler. Mm -hmm. Chrysler. Chrysler. Yeah. Actor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to break down a script for that because that's a total, again, like commercial acting is a whole yeah. other beast. But it depends on the project. You know, if something comes 
if a character really, really meshes with me really quickly and really easily, I don't necessarily need to do that. I probably will at some mm. point just because I'm a very meticulous actor. Um, but it depends. Like, I've worked on scripts where I've read it and I've been like, oh, I know exactly what's happening here. And then I've looked at other shit and I'm like, what is – I don't know. Oh, my God. What am I going to do with this? And then that's when I will really, really dig in. But probably on every script, even Chrysler to some extent – I will really, really dig into it just because I love it. Does that mean it's poorly written when you don't understand what's going on in the script? Not at all. It just means it's a tone or a style, uh, whether the show or the writing, that just doesn't vibe with me right away. Just mm-hmm. the same way when you meet somebody and you're like, oh, my God, we're going to be best friends. There's sometimes when you meet somebody and you're like, oh, okay, we'll warm up to each other. Uh-huh. Some scripts are like that. Some of them you're just like, oh, my God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Other ones you're like, hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a little more of a challenge. And do you go to the director and be like, hey, like, what's going on here? Let's work together. Let's try to figure this out. I mean, if you're at that extent, you know what I mean? Mm Because that's definitely not – if you're hired for a show for one day, Uh you're not going to go to the director and bother him with your five lines. (laughs) If you're – What's my motivation for this? Yeah, he'd be like, get the fuck off my set. (laughs) Like, who hired this girl? Yeah. Um, But if you're – I have had the opportunity to do that, like, when I was on a show, when I was recurring, you know? Oh, yeah. So you're more of, like, a presence on the show. You're not just, like, some Yahoo who comes in for one day. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, you have a little bit more gravitas to do that. But also, I would never come to set being like, well, I'll just ask the director. Mm -hmm. You know, I make up my mind. If he doesn't like it, he can direct me because that's That's what what he he does. does, Which is so much fun. You know, you don't get a lot of directing. You know, film and television in L.A. is so, so, so so fast-paced. So a lot of times there isn't a lot of time to play, you Uh know? So when you do get a direction or he's like, you know, let's try it like this. Like, I mean, I just, my little spongy head is like, <laughs> like, I can't wait. Cause I love that. I'm like, yes, please let me play. Like throw something, throw a wrench in this and, and let me try it like that. Really? You're not, you don't get like, um, uh, what well, this is, we've done it like five times. Like let's, let's move on. That's not you. You're just oh like, God, no, we're, no. Gonna, we're gonna get it until it's right. Oh my, yeah. Are you yeah. kidding? It's like my whole life is leading up to those 15 minutes of shooting that scene. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like anything you want. I'm here forever. That's, that's what I like. Like. Like people act like they have to be somewhere. And I'm like, why are you trying to get out of here? No. This is I'm where like, you have to be. <laughs> and even when I'm not shooting, I'm like, can I just stay in Video Village, please? Like yeah. I just, I adore it. I love everything about it. And I love, I want to know what everybody's doing. Mm-hmm. I'm super nosy. I want to know what the sound guy is doing. I want to know what that button is, what that button is. Like, please don't touch my buttons. <laughs> I'm like, but, but, <laughs> and it's not like, you know, I'm not going to interrupt their day, but I just want to yeah. observe when I can because it's just the best. It's the best place. Would you ever want to direct something? No, I do not have a passion for directing. I would love to do um, production design, mm. and I think I would like to do producing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about it, though. Yeah, I why, don't why think I directing? Would like... you, you, it seems like you want to know like every like facet of the of the industry, but it's like you don't want to. Right. But you were directing as like a, th- a four year old child. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. I mean, maybe I'm totally missing my calling. Yeah. Um, I like to know what everybody's doing because I'm nosy and I want to be a well-rounded actor. And by me knowing what everybody around me is doing, it only enhances my performance and helps me to give them what I know they need. Mm -hmm. But I also really, really love only having to deal with my little corner, Mm -hmm. which is a lot. (laughs) Like, yeah, there's a lot of weight on the actor's shoulders. And we also have the least amount of control because I give you what I give you and then the editor can tear it up and it can turn it into something totally different, you know? Yeah. So, but I don't mind that. Like, I'm happy to just do my part that I'm really, really good at and that I really enjoy and then let the masters do what they want to do. So you you don't get upset when you when you do something and then someone edits like the wrong take. You're like, oh, I did a ba- way better take than that. Like, why didn't they choose that? <laughs> I mean, no, I definitely don't get upset because I understand that I'm just a cog in the machine of creating the director's final mm-hmm. vision. Um, but I also don't, uh, I don't know that I like anything I do really. I think probably all actors are always, you know, it's a little bit like, Ugh. Yeah, like cringing while you watch yourself. It's not, it's not great yourself. to watch yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. no matter what. Um but you it's, don't think – oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say I, it's hard to be objective. So I don't know uh-huh. that I'm ever going to see something and be like, oh, yeah, girl killed it. Like <laughs> I'm never – I don't think I'm ever going to do that. Do you think watching yourself helps yourself become a better actor? Yeah, I, I make myself do it. Oh, so you do also, watch yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean uh-huh. you have to because – and here's why. I hate it and it's horrible. Mm-hmm. It's like literally the most uncomfortable thing. It's just – it's so gross. It's so gross. Um, <laughs> it's so gross. I mean you can ask my sister and my brother-in-law, Curtis – when we were watching, because they've been in town when I've been on television before, and like every week when the episode, when the next episode was airing, like I'm just a, a mess. I'm a total psycho stress ball. I hate it. But the thing is, is that with acting, especially on screen, there's so, there's a huge disconnect as a creative for when I think that I'm doing something and what I'm actually doing. Mm-hmm. Not because I think that I'm like raising my right hand, but sometimes 
you know, you may think that that came off really, really strong and then you watch it on camera and it looks like you didn't do anything, yeah. you know, subtleties or whatever. So it's like, it's very, very important for me to know what I did on set that day and then to see what the product was so that I can adjust myself as necessary and just be a more aware actor of what I was doing. That makes more sense. But it's horrible. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Same with me. I can't listen to like anything I've done. Really? <laughs> yeah. I You're hate... not used to it? No, I'm, I've done it before, but I just like, I, I, I lived it. Like I went through it. I don't yeah, want to have weird. to. weird. And, and like when I do listen back to a podcast I've did, I like, I don't want to be like, oh, I, I should have said this. I could have said that. <laughs> you're why like in the shower, say, like, God, mm. I had a great joke for that. <laughs> not even a joke. It's like, why didn't you take this to the other place? You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. I, it's hard not to pull it apart. And yeah. yeah. And yeah. But I think. Well, <laughs> nitpick. Ugh. But I think that's what makes someone better. Like yeah. to be your own critical. Yeah, you have self. to try to be an objective, yeah. you know, observer and try to, you know, so you can be better the next time you do it. Instead of saying nailed it, move on. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, never. No. Yeah. <laughs> that well, that works for you. Works. <laughs> hopefully it works for me. Have you yeah. have you ever met somebody on set? Like uh like a guy where you're like, hey, I think this guy's into me. Oh, for sure. Really? Oh my god, yeah. I mean, hmm. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How do you, how, how can you tell like what's real and what's not? Because it's all, it's all fake on a movie set or it's... I mean, do you mean another actor on set or do you mean just anybody on set? Oh, you met like, like the crafty person. <laughs> <And you're> like... <laughs> I mean, me and Tim from crafty had a wild <laughs> night. Um, well, I guess anybody, because if, if you are the actor, you're like the main focus. So anyone wants to like, please you. Any, anyone will laugh at whatever you have to say, even though it's not funny. I've seen that happen many times. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's hard to discern what's real and what's not on a movie set. <laughs> so, are you just laughing at all my jokes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. None of this is funny to me. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Um, no, I mean, I think that that's part of being an actor is, that, like, you can't bullshit me. Uh -huh. So, if somebody's just laughing at my jokes to be polite, like, I absolutely know. But people don't usually do that because I'm hilarious, obviously. Um, yeah, the Lord no, of the Rings joke was hilarious <laughs> to Mark Riley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is hilarious. Um... But no, yeah, I think, you know, it's funny because people are like, but like, how do you know when an actor is lying? It's yeah, like, yeah, if because he's... I'm an actor. Like, my job isn't to lie. My job is to make it true. Like, so it is, I mean, it's, it's a much bigger conversation. But no, yeah, I've never been on set and been like, confused about what was real or not. If oh, anything, okay. it's kind of funny because I'm very much the kind of person... Even if it's a really heavy scene, I'm very much the kind of person that it's like when I hear cut, I'm over here making dick jokes. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> I'm really easily in and out of the character. I'm not uh, like a Daniel Day Lewis. You okay, know? so you do you don't method act. You're like call me by my name, my stage <laughs> name. No, uh, no, I don't think I will ever get to the level where I find that a necessary. Mm -hmm. If you're an actor, do your damn job. Like I don't need you to spoon feed me soup <laughs> because I feel like it's helping me get into the character. Yeah. I have a brain and I have an imagination, and that's where it comes from. So I don't. I'm not into that. Do you think that is unnecessary? I do. Yeah. Like when a Jared it's Leto. It's Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. I'm, well, Jared Leto can, that's different, but Daniel Day Lewis can do whatever the hell he wants. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm he's, saying? Like he's, he's awesome. He's the best male actor of our time. Yeah, yeah. So he can do whatever he wants. For me personally, I don't know that I'm ever going to get to the point where I'm like, I've won 27 Oscars, so I'm going to inconvenience somebody mm. at their expense because yeah. I feel like I need it. I don't know. I just, I, I think that that's Maybe. kind of fundamentally kind of Dickish. Oh yeah, like because like I'm not gonna make some PA spoon feed me because yeah. I'm like, but my character is parallel. Like yeah, fuck my left off. foot doesn't like, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I don't yeah. know. I I I think that you know the craft comes from your imagination. Like that's, imagine yeah. that you know just use your imagination. That's what so I. So no, I would never do that. I see. I'm no actor, but I see people like when they try to act. Like oh, he's acting. Whereas Ugh. yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like just pretend like you're saying the line for real. Like, yeah, like we call it acting with a capital A. You're like, ooh, tone it down. Oh, like, that's what like as someone acting means that capital A? Well, if somebody bad acting uh, is acting with a capital A. Yeah, but it, but if you're saying some stupid line like, where do I go for the parking? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliantly written. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this film. Yeah, yeah. No, but like act like you're in a parking lot looking for whatever. Like make it a real situation as opposed to just reading the line. Right. Do you see that with a lot of actors like trying to act and read and... Show the, as much emotion as they can? I mean, no, only because that kind of a hamming it up kind of thing is kind of a green move. Mm. And I think, you know, to get on a set in L.A. is a huge accomplishment and those that kind of stuff gets weeded out. Okay. So, so no. I do know what you're talking about, though. Um, 
but I do want to know where the parking lot is yeah. and how do I... <laughs> I'm going to write this movie. You will see a draft of this. <laughs> I want it in my email tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, I have to go soon because I have to record something. But You're this, so cool. Uh, yeah, it's a big deal. It's like <laughs> super legit, exclusive. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Do you have anything else you want to say or? No, I mean, thank you so much. I feel like I just talked your ear absolutely off. No, I this apologize. is, off. I really wish we can go longer, <laughs> but, um, we have to work, you know? We do. Hey, yeah. workaholics. Yeah. Workaholics um, Anonymous. I had one more question, but I completely forgot it. Were you going to ask me about what? where people can find me? I feel no. like that's how people usually no, I, end it. I, I, oh. I don't care about where people can find you. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> no, um, you have a PI you can recommend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had it again. What do you do at Collider? You are the production. I am the programming coordinator. Oh, to and your Twitter. I'll go on Twitter, Instagram. Go on. <laughs> you can find me everywhere online at Mrs. Graceface. Even though I am not a Mrs. Technically, legally, even though uh -huh. that doesn't actually mean anything. A uh, bigger conversation, except for my Instagram is Mrs. underscore Graceface. I get a lot of hate online when I don't specify that. So. Why don't you keep it the same? Is it's someone taken. taken? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, then change the other one. God, you're blowing my <laughs> mind right now. I'm like, why haven't I done that? I uh, just. I have my question. What's your What's your big dream? Your Your goal? Like my end game? Yeah. No, I hate saying end game because it's like there is no end game. Right. But I've said it before. What's your end game? <laughs> Um, you know, I feel like the, the quick, easy, short answer is that I want to win an Oscar. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do want to win an Oscar. Um, but I also think that's kind of winning an Oscar is not a sustainable end game. Mm -hmm. And I am looking for a sustainable end game. You know, once I win that Oscar, that's literally going to sit on my parents' shelf somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be so proud and so grateful. But then that's it. Yeah. So my end game is to just be constantly working on projects that stretch me because I really love when I'm doing a scene or doing something and I surprise myself, it's amazing. I'm like, holy shit, like, where did that come from? Like, and I'm, it's so much fun and it's so exciting and exhilarating and all those wonderful things. So I want to find projects that constantly are challenging me and that are moving people. Mm -hmm. I want to be doing stuff that people can relate to or laugh at or, you know, feel like, you know, I love watching something and I'm like, oh my God, that just resonated with me so hardcore, you know, and you're like, oh, the feels. <laughs> You know, I want to give people all the feels. What would you rather have them feel? Uh, would you rather have them laugh or cry? Cry. You'd rather make them cry? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's more of, a, that's a harder goal. Well, I think that, you know, tears can be happy or sad. Uh -huh. I'm I'm more of a person who cries when I'm happy than I'm sad. Uh -huh. When I'm sad, my, my emotion is typically anger, which uh -huh. for me is just kind of like a smolder that's quiet. <laughs> when I'm happy, I'll be crying. Oh, uh, okay. So it could be happy tears. Oh, uh, well, that's a good goal too. <laughs> Do, do you ever get Julia Styles? Like people think I do you're... get Julia okay. Styles. You want to know something though? I've met her and she was very unkind to me. Really? Really. So is this a true story? Or are you spreading lies? This is a true story. Oh. I was at an Oscar party and she was there and I'd seen her at several parties oh. and I was like, this is your time, Grace. Like, cause I've always heard that cause I'm a dancer. Oh. We also have kind of a similar uh, vocal tone. We kind of have yeah. like deeper female voices. So when she did like save the last dance, it was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, you're Julia Styles. Cause I was a dancer and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I was like feeling all bold. I was there and like Michael Sheen had been like flirting with me. So I was like, holy shit, like I'm so confident right now. Uh -huh. So I went to talk to her and it was a horrible, horrible epic fail. So I hope that someday I meet her again and I can find out that she was just having a really wretched day. Um, but what yeah. But what happened? Like, what, what did you say? What did you go up to and say? Hey, people say I'm just like you or. Well, we were like shooting the shit for a second and she was just kind of, she was very awkward and aloof. And I was like. Yeah, I said something to that effect. I was like, I always get that you're, because it came up like mm -hmm. organically, but I was like, I always get that you're, um, that I'm your doppelganger. Like mm -hmm. I've gotten that a lot. And I said, especially when you did Save the Last Dance because I'm a dancer. Mm -hmm. And she literally like looked at me like up and down with like this disgusted look on her <laughs> face. And she went like, she literally made this sound. She was like, <laughs> and didn't say anything. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was yeah. like, Oh, God. And then I just sat there, like, swimming in horrible desperation for, like, way too long. And I was like, all right, well, I'm out. I'm going to go hang out with this late. Like, it was horrible. And, and she, she was, and she didn't say, and then she, like, gave me this dirty look. And I was like, whoa. Like, all you have to do is be like, oh, how funny. Like, if you think I'm horribly hideous, then just be like, oh, how funny. And move on. Like, she literally gave me this big, horrible, dirty look and went like this. And it was, like, it was so mean and so uncomfortable. 
And it mm. really bummed me out because yeah. I've gotten that for a lot of years. And mm. I was like, oh, my God. And then I'm going to tell her we're going to be best friends. And then she was mean. <laughs> She's like, no, you do not look like and me. She was like, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> well, now you know not to do that to anybody else. I know. I was like, <laughs> luckily I don't have that many doppelgangers because I'm not fucking doing that again. <laughs> I was like, that's my one shot and I blew it. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully you meet her again and amend, I know. amend things. And I'm sure she'll be very, very lovely and, yeah. you know. I'm sure she's a great person. Yeah. People have bad days. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I I'm hope having to a bad day right yeah, now. No, I hope she... to talk about your bad days soon. <laughs> yeah. Um. Thank you, Miss Graceface, all that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, see you later. We're Let's out. go. I'm out of here. Peace. Bye.